roll out at 8 p.m. Senator Marco Rubio stopped by our studio today. He sat down with CBS 4's Jim DeFeedy for a wide-ranging conversation on everything from trade to the algae crisis in Lake Okeechobee. Jim joins us now. And Jim, uh, trade was a big talk uh, with uh, Marco Rubio. What do you have to say about it? So, you know, obviously one of the things that we're dealing with is the trade war with China and its impact on farmers in the Midwest and lobster fishermen down in the Florida Keys. President Trump has proposed a $12 billion aid package to help farmers, but it's not not clear if that package would include any help for the lobstermen down in the Keys. So I asked Senator Rubio, should they be included? In some way. Well, they would be if this if this thing. I don't think aquaculture would be uh, would be separated from the broader package. It's it not in be. this package. Well, then it shouldn't be because I don't think it should be. I mean, it's not in the package the way they rolled it out. It's not a real package. I mean, it's right. not a legislative proposal. Once the industry rolls it out, you'll see in in there. But the lobstermen, I'm gonna tell you, it's a tough deal that they're facing right now. But the truth is, it, we're not dependent on China as much as people think we are. They love our product. They buy a lot of it. If that product is closed off for them, there are other buyers around the world that have tried to and would want to buy it. I'm not diminishing there would be pain. Look, in any confrontation with China, there's going to be pain. There are industries that are going to get hurt. But that would be true in any conflict with any country, whether it's trade or otherwise. I'm not diminishing it. We need to do what we can to help buffer it. But we cannot allow China to continue to cheat and steal their way uh, into global supremacy. Because then we're going to be in a lot of trouble. Then, then, then our lobstermen are not only going to have to continue to sell to China, but sell to China at prices that China insists they sell it on, maybe even at a, at a price they no longer make a profit. So I want to be clear because it's a little confusing the first part of his answer as to whether or not he believes the lobster fishermen should be included in this package. I went back to his staff. We went back to him. He does say that if in fact there is a package put together that helps the agriculture industry, it should also help the lobster fishermen down in the Florida Keys. But he's not a big fan of trying to do this. He thinks there needs to be a long-term solution and subsidies and a quick fix through aid is not the way to do it. He wants real trade deals. Jim, let me ask you about an environmental issue and those images we see of the algae bloom coming from Lake Okeechobee are sickening and it, it's a horrible thing for Florida's uh, tourist uh, uh, centered uh, economy. What is uh, Senator Rubio saying about that? So look, this is the second year out of the last three years that we've now seen the algae blooms come out of Lake Okeechobee and discharging that algae into the Coosahatchee River and the St. Lucie Estuary. This has been something Senator Rubio's worked on for the last few years. He's gotten more funding for Everglades restoration. He's gotten funding for the reservoir that would be built south of the lake, and he's talked about trying to improve the dam around Lake Okeechobee so that it could hold more water and be a better, not have to release these, to have these releases. But one of the things that he made clear is this is not going to be a quick fix by any means. Here's what he had to say. So we are making progress, but none of this solves this year's problem and, frankly, next year's problem. The and other, maybe a few years even past yeah, that. Yeah, so the only thing we've been able to, one of the things we've been able to do is work with the Corps to be more flexible. And for the first time ever, we're seeing some flexibility from the Army Corps about releases. They are stretching the sort of limitations of engineering to try to hold as much as they can and delay releases. They did it again this week. They're, for the first time ever, taking the algae into account when they decide how much water to release. But that's not a long-term problem. That makes the problem a little better, but not much. Okay, so speaking of the environment, you had some really interesting reporting uh, and interview with Graham, who's running for governor on the Democratic side, um, and about her family's involvement in the land that uh, is the site of the proposed mega mall on the edge of the Everglades. Right, so I figured since we're talking to Marco Rubio about Everglades restoration and the billions of dollars of funding that's being, uh, is being pumped in to try to restore the river of grass, I wanted to know his opinion about what he thought about the mega mall being built on the edge of the Everglades, and also about Gwen Graham in particular, because Graham has been very rough on Republicans. Republicans and members of Congress saying they have not done enough for Everglades restoration, while at the same time her family would benefit and she would benefit from this project that would be built. I asked Senator Rubio if she thought if he thought she was being hypocritical. Well, I don't know what control she has over the company or what role she plays in those decisions, but I think certainly you, if you own a company that's doing things that you're criticizing, then I think that you're in a position to say, you know, I'm going to divest from that company or I'm not going to be involved with them anymore because they're doing something that runs counter to my interests, uh, run, runs counter to my principles, uh, and I'm not going to let my interests get in the way of my principles. On the broader issue of construction, whether it's NAT or the extension of the highway, you know, the Everglades restoration is something that I've really fallen in love with in the last four or five years. 
years have made it a top priority. It's one of the things I really want to leave behind when we're done here is having that completed. And I understand we have an urban development boundary. That mall, I think, edges right up on it. Uh, it's there for a reason. My entire career, I've been very pro-development, and I continue to be, but I get a little... I'm more, uh, how should I say this, I'm more cautious than I used to be about simply saying all development is good the closer it gets to the Everglades because any project that, that gets close to that line could potentially attract additional projects close to that line. And once you get people and buildings and stuff built there on that line, it makes it harder to do those other projects that are critical to restoring the Everglades. The Everglades is a national priority and it is a statewide priority. You know, I also asked him just real briefly about the uh, governor's race on the Republican side, right. whether or not he supports DeSantis or Adam Putnam. He's staying out of that race. It's kind of interesting to see. He's got friends on both.